Hello everybody, it is Saturday, February the 12th, 13th, sorry, uh, 2016, and this short video will be a full demonstration of how to properly use an antique ringer washer, and in this case I'll be using the 1935 Maytag 30WP, that's the model, 30WP, that I have fully restored uh, in the last few months. Uh, so the first step in ringer washer operation due to the fact that you want to reuse your water is you s make sure you sort accurately. So behind the washer you can see an assortment of piles. The first to go in the hot water would be what are called clean whites. So those would be kitchen linens, towels, um, in this case undershirt shirts, uh, underwear and socks and uh, the like would go in the second wash after the kitchen linens. In this case today I don't have any kitchen linens so we've got socks and underwear and white t-shirts, towels and then a couple of uh, cotton bath mats. Then behind that would be the colored towels or the light towels, light colored towels and then after that finally would be darks and the darks could be further even divided into two piles. You could have what would be considered clean darks, shirts and socks, and then if you had dirty overalls and the likes, those would be your final darks. And by that point, typically the hot water that you've used in the first load has cooled enough uh, so it's just warm by the time you get to the darks. So it's a very efficient way of conserving water and uh, it still does an excellent job because of course you're starting with the light colors. So the first step is to fill the washer which of course is done by hand and in the sink you see I've got a length of hose attached to a coupling onto the kitchen faucet. So we're going to fill the washer to the load line which is on the agitator. You can see sort of a hatch marked line there. So that'll be the fill line. So when I come back, uh, the washer will be filled. We'll add detergent and it'll be ready to go. Okay, part two of these detailed instructions for how to use a ringer washer. The uh, tub is now filled up to the water line. It's actually just below which will allow some uh, expansion room for the clothing. Um, it'll bring it up. You never want to go past the water line because there, um, the drive block uh, on the top of the post underneath the agitator uh, is, is not wide open but it does have an opening that goes down into the transmission. So what you in effect will do is leak water into your transmission which will displace the oil and cause a lot of trouble. So you never want to do that. Uh, so the now the next step we'll plug the machine in because there is no on and off switch on a Maytag. So that'll get the motor going. We will then engage the agitator which is done by this lever here pushing it over and the agitation begins. At this point you add your laundry detergent either powder or liquid as you prefer. I tend to use liquid and a non-oxygenated detergent, for example the Sun Triple Clean. Uh, the aluminum will badly darken if you use any sort of oxygenated uh, detergent or bleach. So once that's dissolved, we'll start adding the uh, clothing. So we've got our pile of whites here. And this is a crucial step. You never add your clothing and then the water. It's always the clothing after the water and the detergent because that way you know the proper load. Otherwise you'll end up overloading your machine potentially, which will cause a number of things. It's hard on the motor, plus it just won't do a good job. So as Maytag instructed in their manuals, you always added the clothing one article at a time. As long as there was clear circulation and tumbling towards the center of the tub. So we'll see as the uh, soap bubbles dissolve there, you'll see the rollover action which is what Maytag was famous for. 
And this was a trademark term, gyrofoam action. So there you can clearly see, we've still got some room for a couple more items. Some dress shirts, they don't take up much room. And we'll just check and see how that's uh, loaded now. We can probably take a couple of more small items. So let's do a pair of socks. And a couple more t-shirts should do it. Now if you notice that it is overloaded, you can always take a piece out, but you'll get the hang of it uh, visually. And that looks perfect. You've still got uh, ample rollover of the clothing, which is the key sign to efficient washing. So the next step, uh, oh, and uh, Maytag recommended times for washing in hot water whites was only three to five minutes. So that's another thing you'll often see reference to um, beating your clothes in a ringer washer for an hour. That just is not the case. You just wear out your clothes and it's not necessary. So three to five minutes for whites and uh, the same for colors, uh, for cotton denims, like dirty work overalls, things like that, uh, it was up to 10 minutes but nothing more than 10 minutes. So you get typically a whole family's uh, wash done for the week in about an hour. That's the way Maytag advertised it. So in the next uh, step in part three, we'll do the ringing. And uh, you'll see behind the uh, machine, we've got the basket set up to catch the ringer, or to catch the uh, rung out clothes, okay? So part three, next. And now on to part three, which will be wringing the clothes after they've washed. So we'll switch the agitator off and open up the lid. And at the present time for storage, the ringers are always kept locked or separated. Uh, as you can see, there's a space between them. So in storage, that's the way you keep it so that the uh, ringer rolls never get a flat spot on them. You don't want tension on them when they're, when they're just uh, being stored. So this whole mechanism, as you can see, swings. We're going to push the pressure bar back until the tension posts lock into place. And then we'll pull back to secure the tension. And there we have it. Turn the... Uh, Bring her on, forward position. Now this will be a little tricky doing one-handed, but the key is to do your articles as evenly as possible, and if they're light, you want to go to the center of the article. That'll prevent it from wrapping around the ringer. In this case, most of our items are pretty hefty, like a t-shirt, but uh, we'll take the middle of it, and you want it to be distributed evenly as you place it in the ringers. So you don't want it over to one side, right in the center will get even pressure. And uh, here's another one. As you can see, the water flume directs the water back into the tub. Now I won't be able to do this one-handed, but a shirt you would uh, position so that the buttons would be facing upward as you put it into the uh, into the rollers. Reason being, the top roller on an old Maytag is soft, the bottom is hard, so the soft top one would protect zippers, buttons, snaps from getting broken. Won't be able to do that one, as I said, one-handed, but we'll do one more t-shirt before we pause for part four. So there you can see it coming out the other side and down into the basket. Now that would typically be a rinse tub, but of course in an apartment I don't have room for rinse tubs. So I have to wring everything out, do all the loads of wash first, drain the tub, and then rinse back in the same tub. So it's a bit of a, uh, an effort, but uh, it's fun, at least I find it fun, <laughs> and it does a very good job. So that's it for part three. Part four will be the final uh, part uh, discussing cleanup, emptying the tub and uh, preparing it to be put away and stored until the next use. Thanks for watching. 
Okay, this is just another short addition to part three on ringing. Uh, the second load of whites was the uh, very thick bath mats made out of 100% cotton. So just to show you how competently or with ease the ringer handles this. Feed it in in one corner and as it goes in spread the uh, bulk along the, the width of the roller and you can see it just handles it no problem. Well, that was a very thick cotton bath mat and uh, it does it with ease. So I thought you all might know. So in the final installment of this instruction uh, series uh, the washing is done, rinsing is done, uh, so it's time to empty the tub, rinse it out, and prop the ringers in preparation for uh, storage. So the uh, water is almost pumped out. Just a little bit left, and then we'll rinse the uh, tub out with clear water. This is always essential. With any soap residue and also removal of the agitator is also essential and it should be dried and left to air dry. So we'll just take that out and place it over there. We'll wipe that off. And then in this bottle, let's just turn this pump off because it's a little bit noisy. So in this pump bottle, which was typical of all Maytags, there was a strainer, a lint strainer. Uh, so that has to be lifted out and cleaned. As you can see, especially after those uh, area carpets, there's quite a bit of fuzz. That was the one disadvantage that hadn't been addressed back then, at least to my knowledge, was a lint filter. Later models, especially Speed Queens, um, I can't think of any other brands off the, the top of my head, but Speed Queen did uh, make a little agitator mounted lint uh, filter. But Maytag, in the, especially in these models in the 30s, didn't have any. So there is our clean tub. The uh, ringers are released and then propped open. They can be uh, rinsed off with cool water uh, to make sure there's no soap residue and then left to air dry and uh, propped open. That's essential as I mentioned earlier so that you don't get flat spots on the uh, rubber rolls. So that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, one last thing uh, which I won't be able to show you because I'm one-handed here with the camera, but after the pump has finished there's always a little bit of uh, residual water in the pump mechanism upwards of Oh, a cup or two. So uh, it's essential that you lower the hose into a little bucket or a bowl to drain the last bit of water from the pump and that'll prevent uh, or at least help prevent corrosion of the, the pump there. So uh, that's it for now. Hope it was uh, helpful. If there are any questions just uh, address those on the YouTube site and I will respond. Thanks for watching.